to come on a wonderful day like today. <laughs> Hello everyone. You sound like a very happy chappy today, Ben. <laughs> <sighs> oh, it seems like Ben has more than just a smile on his face. He's got a big red spot too. <laughs> hey. uh, that's small. Why are you staring at me? Staring? Yes. Maybe you think I look Rather handsome today. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that, Ben. I'm staring at your spot. What spot? That one on your chin. Where? <laughs> there. Oh, it's no good. I can't see it. I need a mirror. But we don't have a mirror, Ben. Why don't you try seeing your reflection in something shiny, like a saucepan lid? Good idea, little cook. Right. Oh, there we are. Here we go. Let's have a look at this spot. <laughs> oh! <laughs> My face looks all funny in this little cook. It's sort of fat and sort of thin at the same time. <laughs> but I still can't see this spot, though. <coughs> oh! Sounds like we've got a customer. I'll have to worry about that later. Go and see who it is, little cook. I'm on my way! Woohoo! So, who's our customer today, Small? Well, she's white with brown spots. Hmm. White with brown spots, you say? Give us another clue. She likes to go moo. And she's very good at jumping over the moon. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such fun. And the dish ran away with the spoon. Ho oh, ho, it's Clover, the cow who jumped over the moon. You're right, Ben. Clover the cow. Now, what would a moon jumping cow like to eat? I think it's time to look in my book. <laughs> We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. One evening, I was camping out under the stars when... I was suddenly awoken by the sound of a fiddle. Followed by loud laughter. <laughs> I poked my head out of the tent and saw a cat playing the fiddle whilst a little dog, a cow, a china dish and a silver spoon danced together beneath the moon. When the music stopped, I cheered. Hello, laughed the little dog. Come and watch Clover the cow. She's going to jump over the moon. It won't be easy, said Clover. The moon is in a bit of a silly Everyone looked up at the moon. Silly Billy me! It giggled and it bounced around the sky. We all held our breath as Clover tried to jump over the moon. But it kept bouncing away. I wish the moon would keep still, Clover groaned. I can't jump over it. Suddenly, I had an idea. You are such a beautiful moon. It stopped bouncing and listened. So creamy and dreamy, I continued. You're nearly as beautiful as the other moon. What other moon? said the moon. It's there, floating on top of the lake, I said. The moon stayed very still as it stared at its own reflection in the lake and whilst it was staring, 
another cow leapt right over it. Hooray! I cheered. There isn't really a moon more beautiful than you, I told the moon. It's just your own reflection in the water. <laughs> Silly Billy me, giggled the moon, admiring its own reflection. And suddenly it saw Clover's reflection too, just as she jumped over it. <laughs> we look wonderful together, Clover, said the moon. So Clover kept jumping and the little dog laughed and laughed. <laughs> Little Cook to the Rescue once again! That was a great adventure! So Clover jumped over the moon and the moon was very pleased indeed thanks to you, Small! Thanks, Ben! So, what can we cook for a hungry moon leaper? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question, Ben! I know! Big Cook's Big Cookery Book! Of course! The Big Cookery Book! There's recipes for everything in there! And where do we look for things to cook? In the book! In the book! In Big Cook's Book! Aha! Here we go! I found just the recipe for clover. It's creamy, it's dreamy and a little bit dotty too. It's spotty trifle! And it's spotty just like Clover the Cow. <laughs> it's moo dupa <laughs> <laughs> OK, you read out the ingredients, Little Cook, and I'll see if we've got them. OK, let's see. We're going to need jelly. Oh, jelly, yes. Here we go. Jelly in the cupboard. Oh, we're using strawberry, but you can use any flavour you like. Trifle sponges. In the cupboard as well. Got the trifle sponges, Small. Jam. Oh, jam, yes. Lovely jam. Yep. A tin of fruit cocktail. Oh, very fruity. Got the fruit cocktail. Custard. Oh, lovely yellow custard. I love this. Got it, Small. Chocolate buttons. Chocolate buttons. Oh, lovely chocolate buttons. I love these. In the fridge. Chocolate buttons. Got those too, Small. And some cream for whipping. Oh, delicious cream. Here we go. Oh, right. OK. There we are. Right. Small, we don't seem to have any cream for whipping. Oh, no. But it's OK, because we've got everything else. So why don't you whiz off and get some, and I'll get all the ingredients ready. That's a great idea, Ben. See you later. <laughs> hey, why don't you come along too? Way! Go, Small! Go, Small! Whiz away! I wonder what he'll see today. I love the countryside. That's grass. Something is eating the grass. What is it? It's a cow. <laughs> this is a milking parlour. Pipes are put on the cow's udders to suck out the milk. I wonder where the milk goes next. Hey, what's in that big tanker? Oh, it's full of the milk from the cows. The milk is being delivered to the dairy. That man is connecting up a pipe so that the milk can travel from the tanker into the dairy to be made into cream. This is the dairy. The milk is heated up to just the right temperature and it travels through all these pipes. The cream is separated from the milk. Hey, that's the cream! Now the cream is poured into this machine. It's called a pasteuriser. The cream is heated up to get rid of any harmful bugs. This makes it safe to eat. The cream is now cool and ready to put into bottles. Remember to keep your cream in the fridge. I'd better get some of this cream back to the cafe. See you later. Mirror, mirror, made of foil, help me see my big red boil. Way! I'm back. Have you managed to see your spot yet, Ben? <laughs> Not yet, Small. This foil's too crinkly. Well, let's get on with making the trifle. It'll cheer you up. Woohoo! And I brought back the cream. 
Woohoo! Woo ho ho! Well done, Small. It's so scrummy and creamy. I had a great time. I saw cows being milked. Moo! <laughs> and then I went to the dairy where I saw cream being made. Oh, yummy! Come on then, Small. Let's get started. We're all ready, so take a look. And we will show you how to cook. <music> Jelly boats and pirates go, princess pea pies. Carrot cakes and fruity smiles. And envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. He is big cook and he is small. Friends in our cafe, we cook for them all. When your tummy gets all rumbly, you're ready for a treat. You can make something delicious to eat. Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All, All clean, clean and, and ready, ready to cook. cook. Do you remember the ingredients to Spotty Trifle? You do. There was jelly. One packet of your favourite flavour. We're using strawberry. Trifle sponges. Four. Jam. One tablespoon of your favourite flavour. Again, we're using strawberry. Fruit cocktail. One tin. Custard. One carton. Chocolate buttons. One packet. And cream for whipping. 250 millilitres. Whoopee! Let's get started! I've cut the trifle sponges in half and now I'm going to cover them in the sticky jam. Hoo -hoo. There's one. Ho -ho -ho. I love jammy jobs. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Finish the last one off. Nice and jammy. <laughs> On goes the top. And we can lay the trifle sponges at the bottom of a trifle bowl. There we are. Oh, I think I'll have to keep my eye on Little Cook so he doesn't eat all the jam. He can't resist it. Mm. I'm just checking the jam's nice and fresh. <laughs> oh, yes. And now you've got a jammy moustache. <laughs> <laughs> I love jam. <laughs> oh, right. These sponges are lovely and jammy now, so I'm going to sieve the juice from the fruit cocktail into a bowl to separate the fruit from the juice. And this is a slippy, sloppy job, so look out you don't get dripped on, little cook. <laughs> Drip this way, please, Ben. Mm. <laughs> right, now I can sprinkle the fruit over the sponges. You can use fresh fruit if you like. Fruit is very good for you. <laughs> hey, Ben, how's your spot? I'd forgotten all about my spot until you reminded me. <laughs> right. Now, I've already dissolved the jelly cubes in some hot water. And that's a job for your grown-up helper to do because the water is hot, hot, hot. Once the cubes have dissolved, we can pour it all over the sponges and the fruit. Do it quite carefully so that it doesn't splash. Splash this way, please, Ben. <laughs> when the jelly has cooled down, it needs to go in the fridge to set for two hours. So, over we go. And into the fridge. For two hours. The jelly is set now, so it's time to pour on the custard. Here we go. Oh, look at that. It's like a lovely yellow custody waterfall. Is it time to put the cream on now, Ben? Yes, it is, Small, and it's going to get gloopy, so stand well back. <laughs> Pour the cream into a bowl like this, and then start mixing. It'll start to get thicker. <laughs> An electric whisk will help, but I'm going to try and do it with my arm. Be careful, Ben. <laughs> oh, no. I've been splashed. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, Small. Now look who's got spots. <laughs> <laughs>
I better go and get myself cleaned up. <laughs> now the cream's ready when it starts to make little mountain peaks like this. So once it's ready, we can start to spread it on the custard. So I'm going to take a spoon and onto the custard it goes. And we've got lots of it, so get it all on. There we go, lovely and creamy. And spread it out. Nice and smooth. <laughs> what about the spots, Ben? A spotty trifle needs spots. <laughs> Whoops, I almost forgot. To make the trifle spotty, we cover it with chocolate buttons. Spotty. Dotty. Spotty. Dotty. Spotty. Dotty. Spotty. <laughs> there. And when the trifle's nice and spotty, it's finished. Quick, Ben. Get it to clover the cow while it's still nice and cool. OK, then. One spotty trifle coming through. There. All done. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away. Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean. Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam. My name's Ben and my name's Small. We've got the cleanest kitchen of all. Tidy all the bits and bobs, the things that help us do our job. Ingredients well put away, ready for use another day. Pots and pans will start to smell if we don't wash them really well. And now it's clear, let's all smile, we'll be finished in a little while. All around, up and down, we've got the cleanest cafe in town. Aha! Here comes the plate! Oh, yes! And it looks like Clover the cow enjoyed her spotty trifle. Look, Small, she's left a note. Well, what does it say? What does it say? Let's see, shall we? It says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, Thank you for the scrumptious spotty trifle. Hoo -hoo. I'm very busy moon jumping these days. The moon keeps still most of the time. She loves watching our reflections in the lake. Oh! Talking about reflections, I have a moon mirror for each of you. I hope your spot goes soon, Big Cook Ben. Big moos from Clover. Look, Small, it's mirrors. Here's your mirror, Small. Thanks, Ben. Oh, how very kind of Clover. And how very handsome. <laughs> Aha, at last, a mirror. Now let's have a look at this spot. Uh! Oh, hang on a minute. That's not a spot. Oh, it's a blob of tomato sauce. Oh, see you soon. <laughs> see you soon. <laughs> Big cook, little cook. Welcome to our cafe. Big cook, little cook. Want you to come and play. You know what, Small? I think something really exciting is going to happen today. What's even more exciting than usual, Ben? Yes, really special. Oh, hang on. What's this? <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, hey, Small. Oh, oh. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our cafe, the best cafe in the world. Somebody's just left a letter out by the back door. Oh, small! Just as I suspected, something extra fabo dabo exciting is happening. Oh, how exciting! Hello, everyone. Is it from you? Huh? So who's it from? Oh, small! I don't believe this. Oh, this is brilliant. 
Who's it from, Ben? Oh, oh, small. It's from old King Cole. It's an invitation to his party. Ooh <laughs> it says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, please come to my party at the palace. The palace? Whoa! Please think of a game that we can all play from Old King Cole. Brilliant! I can't wait for the party! <laughs> but what sort of game can we take? Hmm. Oh, we could take Throw the Custard Tart. We could make <laughs> lots of custard tarts and then wee splat! <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea to throw custard tarts at old King Cole. What if he gets sticky blobs on his royal robes? That would never do. <laughs> hmm. Well, if we can't play throw the custard tart, we... Oh, we could play pass the parcel. But we don't have enough time to make the parcel, Ben. Hmm, you're right. No, we don't. <coughs> Come on, Small. We'll have to think about this later. Sounds like we've got a customer. I'm on my way. Woohoo! Who's in the cafe today, Small? Well, it's someone who's big and hairy. <laughs> big and hairy? Hmm. You'll have to give us another clue, Small. She's big and strong, and her ears are long. So she's big and hairy and strong, and her ears are long. Hmm. And here's one more clue. She says, Ear, ear. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. It's Daphne the donkey. You're right, Ben. I wonder what a donkey would like to eat. I think it's time to look in my book. <laughs> We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. One day I decided to go to the seaside. It was a lovely day and there were donkeys on the beach giving children rides. They were having great fun. Then I spotted a very sad looking donkey. She was staring into a shop window. The shop was selling colourful rock, candy floss and boiled sweets. The donkey told me her name was Daphne and she just loved looking at all the colourful sweets in the shop. Oh, they looked so inviting, so pretty and shiny, she said. But Daphne was a clever little donkey. She knew that the sweets would be bad for her teeth. So all she could do was stare at the lovely colours. Then I had an idea. I took Daphne along the street to another shop window, a shop that sold fruit and vegetables. Oh, how pretty, said Daphne. All those lovely shapes and colours. I went into the shop and bought some vegetables. First, I gave Daphne a stick of celery. It's so munchy and crunchy and green exclaimed Daphne. Munch, 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 munch. Next, I gave Daphne a red pepper. I love the colour red and it's so shiny. She gobbled it up, licking her lips. Finally, I handed her a long, juicy carrot. Scrummy, yumptious, so pretty and orange. Eeyore, Eeyore Daphne. That was my favourite. I didn't know about this shop with the lovely colourful vegetables in the window and they're really good for my big teeth. <laughs> I knew something else that would be good for her teeth. A toothbrush. She could keep her teeth extra healthy by brushing them after every meal. To say thank you, Daphne took me for a donkey ride on the beach. It was brilliant. Woohoo! Little Cook to the rescue once again. That was a great adventure. So Daphne the donkey discovered the yumminess of vegetables thanks to you, little cook. Way! And now she's eating lots of vegetables. Her teeth are staying nice and healthy too. But we still don't know what to cook for her. Hmm. Oh! <sighs> I know Big Cook's Big Cookery Book. Of course, the big cookery book. There's recipes for everything in there. 
And where do we look for things to cook? In the book, in the book, in Big Cook's book. Hey, look at this. It's perfect. Munchy crunchy carrot. A donkey's dream. Come on then, little cook. You read out the ingredients and I'll see if we've got them. OK, let's see. We're going to need onion. Onion over here. In there. Yep, got the onion. Carrot. Here we go as well. Carrots. Donkeys love carrots. Celery. Celery in the fridge. There we go. Nice and green. Got the celery. Water. Oh, we can get that from the tap later. Vegetable stock cubes. Oh, that should be over in the cupboard. Here we go. Got those small. Olive oil. In the cupboard as well. Yep. And rice. Rice, rice. Oh, here we go. Basmati rice. Right. Everything we need for the recipe. Small. I've always wondered where basmati rice comes from. So have I. Well, why don't you whiz off and find out and I'll get everything ready. That's a great idea, Ben. See you later. <laughs> hey, why don't you come along too? Way! Go small, go small, whiz away. I wonder what he'll see today. I'm in India. These are fields where pure basmati rice is grown. These are the nursery fields. The man is planting rice seeds. When the seeds grow, the stalks are moved to water flooded paddy fields. The plant is ready to pick. Once picked, the plant is banged against metal drums. This gets the rice out of the stalks. The rice is then loaded onto carts and taken to be sold. This man is checking the rice grain by rubbing it in the palm of his hand. The rice will be dried and then packed to be sent to the shops. I'd better get back to the cafe. I was wondering if old King Cole might want to play Keep the Balloon Up in the Air. Way! I'm back! And I found out all about Basmati rice. It grows in water flooded fields. Oh, well, I never knew that. Ben, what are you doing with that balloon? Well, I thought we could teach old King Cole how to play Keep the Balloon Up in the Air. It's my favourite game, and whenever I play... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, I forgot to tie the knot. Oh. Ben, I think we'd better start cooking. You're right, little cook. Off we go. We're all ready, so take a look, and we will show you how to cook. The jelly boats and pirates go, princess pea pies. Carrot cakes and fruity smiles And envelope surprise We love our cafe and we love to cook We have a fantastic recipe book He is big cook and he is small Friends in our cafe we cook for them all When your tummy gets all rumbly You're ready for a treat you can make something delicious to eat Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes! Have you washed your hands? Yes! All clean and ready to cook! Do you remember the ingredients to munchy crunchy carrot? You do? There was onion One finely chopped Carrot One medium sized chopped Celery One stick chopped and the leafy bit is for the decoration Water One litre Vegetable stock cubes One Olive oil Two tablespoons And rice 125 grams We're using basmati rice Whoopee! Let's get started! I've heated one tablespoon of the oil in a frying pan. Now this is a job for your grown-up helper to do because it's a hob job. And remember, the hob is hot, hot, hot. When the oil is nice and hot, add the onion. 
and cook it until it's nice and soft. Mmm, it's the smell of onion cooking again. Whoopee! Now I'm still trying to think of a game we can play at Old King Cole's party. Mmm, so am I. Oh, I know, I know. Musical chairs. When the music starts, you have to dance all around the chairs. And when the music stops, you have to sit on the nearest chair. But if you can't find a chair to sit on, it means you're out. <laughs> But kings don't usually sit on ordinary chairs, they sit on thrones. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Thinking up a party game for the king is more difficult than I thought. Now I've made a litre of vegetable stock by putting the stock cube into the boiling water. And I'm just giving it a final stir to get rid of all the lumps. There we go. Our onions are nice and soft now, so I'm going to pour the stock in. In it goes. And then add the rice. Bring it back to the boil. It'll take about 20 minutes to cook, so keep stirring it until all the water has been soaked up by the rice. <laughs> This is ready now, so I'm going to take it off the heat, pop it down there, and then ask your grown-up helper to put the rest of the oil into another frying pan and heat it up. Then I'm going to fry the chopped celery and the chopped carrots. Don't add the leafy bit of the celery, because we'll need that later. Mmm, the sizzling now. I like the word sizzle, because it sounds like it's sizzling. Sizzle. <laughs> yes, it does, doesn't it? I've never thought of it like that before. Sizzle. Keep the celery and the carrots sizzling away until they go soft. That's looking good. It smells good too. Oh yes, it does smell delicious, doesn't it, Small? Right, now it's time to mix the carroty mixture with the rice. So, I'm going to pour that in there. There we go. And then bring this over to the heat. Give it a stir around. We still haven't thought of a party game. Does that mean we're not allowed to go to Old King Cole's party? Well, not unless we think of something quick, Small. You keep thinking, and I'll finish our munchy crunchy carrot. OK. Hmm. It's cooked now, so our munchy crunchy carrot is almost ready. We just need to spoon the mixture onto a plate and then mould it into a carrot shape. That's a good carroty shape, Ben, but it would look even better if you put the celery leaves on top. Ah, yes. Here we go. In there. And there. Oh, great. It looks just like a real carrot. That looks delicious. Let's get it through to Daphne the donkey while it's still hot. Uh, Small, weren't you supposed to be thinking up a party game for us? You haven't forgotten, have you? Whoops! <laughs> OK, one munchy crunchy carrot coming through! There, all done. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away! Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean, make the kitchen sparkle and gleam. My name's Ben, and my name's Small. We've got the cleanest kitchen of all. Tidy all the bits.
bits and bobs, the things that help us do our job. Ingredients we'll put away, ready for use another day. Pots and pans will start to smell, if we don't wash them really well. And now it's clear, let's all smile, we'll be finished in a little while. All around, up and down, we've got the cleanest cafe in town. Well, we're all dressed up for the party, but we still haven't thought of a game to play. Don't worry, Ben. We'll just have to keep on thinking. And look! Here comes the plate. Oh, yes! It looks like Daphne enjoyed her munchy, crunchy carrot. Look, Small. She's left a note. Well, what does it say? What does it say? <laughs> Let's see, shall we? It says, Dear Big Cook Ben, and little cook small. My munchy crunchy carrot was scrumptious. Woohoo! I heard you were having some trouble thinking of a game to play at Old King Cole's party. To say thank you, I've made you the perfect game. Stick the tail on the donkey. Have fun from Daphne the donkey. Small, look at this! Oh, oh, oh. she's given us the perfect game. Way! Whoopee! Stick the tail on the donkey! That's brilliant! Come on then, Small, let's give it a try! I'll put the blindfold on. OK, I remember this one. Now, first of all, you have to start spinning. OK, I'm spinning, Small! Now stop and stick the tail on the donkey. I've done it! I've done it, Small! Oh, where's the tail? I thought I'd stuck it on the donkey. It's stuck on me! Eh -oh, eh -oh. <laughs> now I've got a top hat and tail. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to practice. Come on, Ben. Let's go to the palace for the party. Hey, <laughs> see you soon. See you soon. Big cook, little cook. Welcome to our cafe. I wonder what it's doing here. Oh, hello. Welcome to our cafe. The best cafe in the world. Look at this tent. Isn't it fantastic? I don't know what it's doing here, though. Maybe there's someone inside. Hello? Is there anybody there? Hello? Oh! <laughs> the doorway's moving. I think there's someone or something inside. Hey! Maybe an alien landed during the night. <laughs> Do aliens like camping? I don't know. Don't be scared. I won't hurt you. <laughs> oh dear, it's a giant caterpillar. Small. It's me, Small. It's Ben. Small. Oh, oh I feel a bit wobbly. Whoa, whoa, timber. Oh, 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 oh. 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 It's only me, Small. <laughs> oh, hello, everyone. I've just been trying out my sleeping bag. You gave me a bit of a fright there, Ben. <laughs> Sorry, Small. It's just I'm going camping soon and I wanted to try out my new camping gear. Camping? Is that when you sleep in a tent under the stars? Uh-huh. Can I come? Of course you can, Small. It wouldn't be any fun unless you came along. <laughs> hey, I've even got you your very own little sleeping bag. <laughs> oh, brilliant. My very own sleeping bag. Hey, Small, that's not all I've got in here. I've also got lots of other special equipment that we need for when we go camping. I've got a torch here so we can see in the dark. And I've also got a toothbrush to keep our teeth nice and clean. <laughs> and I've even got a teddy bear to snuggle up to at bedtime. <laughs> oh, and what's this? Oh no, the lining's come out of your sleeping bag, Ben. Oh dear, Small. Oh, if the lining comes out of my sleeping bag, I won't have anything to keep me nice and warm. Well, don't worry, Ben. We'll just put something else in there. Well, we'll have to worry about that later, Small. Sounds like we've got a customer. 
I'm on my way. Woohoo! So who is it, Small? Who's our customer today? Well, she has soft feathers and a big beak. <laughs> oh, and what sound does she make? Honk, honk. <laughs> oh, so she has feathers and a beak and she honks when she speaks. Anything else? You're going to be amazed when you hear this. She's golden. Wow, so she has feathers and a beak and she honks when she speaks and her feathers are actually golden. I think I know who it is. Is it Goldie, the golden goose? You're right, Ben. And she's a beautiful sight to see. Now, how do we decide what to cook for a golden goose? I think it's time to look in my book. We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's Adventures in the Big World. Let me see. Once, whilst I was sailing in the Pacific Ocean, I discovered a forgotten island. Through my binoculars, I could see that the island was dotted with lots of small hills. And on each of the hilltops, some very unusual birds had built their nests. I decided to go ashore and take a closer look. It was a very pretty place. The green grass was sprinkled here and there with golden feathers, which sparkled in the sun. <laughs> I hiked to the top of one of the hills, and there, sitting on top of her nest, I saw the most beautiful golden goose. Oh, hello, hello there. W welcome to Golden Goose Island, honked the goose. Would, would, you, would you like to see my three golden eggs? Oh, yes. I'd love to, I replied. But when the golden goose showed me her eggs, she realised that instead of three glittering golden eggs sitting safely in the nest, there are only two. One of the eggs had rolled down the side of the hill. It was lying in the grass below. Oh no! The golden goose flew down to the egg and tried to nudge it up the hill with her beak. But it kept rolling back down again. Oh! Oh, whatever shall I do? She cried. I thought for a moment, and then suddenly I had an idea. I know. I can balance the egg on my spoon mobile. It was a tricky job. The golden egg was quite heavy. But eventually, I slipped it back into the nest, safe and sound. Oh, thank you, thank you so much cried the golden goose, and she let out a great honk of joy. Honk! <laughs> Little cook to the rescue once again! That was a great adventure. So the golden goose had all her eggs safely in her nest, thanks to your quick thinking, Small. Way! That spoonmobile of yours is really handy. Thanks, Ben. But we still don't know what to cook for Goosey. I know, Big Cook's Big Cookery Book. Of course, the Big Cookery Book. There's recipes for everything in there. And where do we look for things to cook? In the book, in the book, in Big Cook's Book. Ho oh, ho, here we are, Small. I found just the right recipe for Goldie the Goose. Golden plum eggs. So what are we waiting for? <laughs> you read out the ingredients, Little Cook, and I'll see if we've got them. OK, let's see. We're going to need plums. Over we go, in the fruit bowl, plums, lovely, got them. Sugar. In the cupboard, sugar, yes, got the sugar small. Chocolate. Chocolate in the fridge. Chocolate, mm -hmm. lovely chocolate, yep. And creme fraiche. Ooh, creme fraiche, yes, that is tasty, got that as well. Here we are, everything we need for the recipe. Great. There's just one thing that's bothering me though, small. What's that? Well, I don't know where plums come from. Do you? Uh, no. <laughs> well, why don't you whiz off and find out, little cook, and I'll get everything ready. 
That's a great idea. See you later. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Hey, why don't you come along too? Hooray! Go small, go small, whiz away! I wonder what he'll see today. There's a train! Choo choo! This is the right place. I've come to an orchard where plums grow. Joseph is going to pick some plums. That's it. Reach up high. Oh, look at these juicy plums, Libby. Please. Now Libby's having a go. Plums are a fruit and they grow on trees. They start off green and then they slowly turn purple. Like these. They're ripe and ready to eat. Wow, they've picked lots of plums. Plums are juicy and very good for you. They're delicious. Best get back to the cafe. Bye. Oh, my sleeping bag looks like it's been leaking for ages. There's hardly any stuffing left. Well, hey, I'm back. I had a great time. I found out that plums are a fruit that grow on trees. And when they're ready to eat, they go a lovely purpley colour. Mmm, sounds delicious. Now let's get cooking. We're all ready, so take a look. And we will show you how to cook. <music> Jelly boats and pirates gold, princess pea pies, carrot cakes and fruity smiles, and envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. He is big cook and he is small. Friends in our cafe, we cook for them all. When your tummy gets all rumbly, you're ready for a treat. You can make something delicious to eat. Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All, All clean, clean and ready, ready to, to cook. cook. Do you remember the ingredients to golden plum eggs? You do. There were plums. Three. Sugar. One dessert spoon. Chocolate. Two squares. And creme fraiche. Four tablespoons. Whoopee! Let's get started. OK, the first thing we need to do is pour the sugar into a saucepan and then half fill the saucepan with water like this that's about right and then we can turn on the heat and warm up the sugar and the water until it starts to boil and remember this is a job for your grown-up helper to do because it's a hob job and the hob is hot 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 <laughs> Shh. while Ben is busy I'm going to go and try and find something to line the sleeping bag with. <laughs> hey, I wonder if we've got any cotton wool. And this is another job for your grown-up helper to do. They need to score the plums using a knife, which means making little cuts down the side of the plums to make it easier for the skin to peel away later. So once we've done that, 
I'm going to pop the plums into the boiling sugary water like this and we need to keep them in there for four minutes and just pop the lid on to keep all the heat in there we go now they need to cook until the skin starts to peel away but make sure that they keep their shape because these are going to be our golden eggs way look I've got a cotton bud sword uh, small may I ask why you're waving that cotton bud I was looking for cotton walls to fill the lining of your sleeping bag, Ben. But I could only find cotton buds. Ho oh, ho! Cotton buds would make my sleeping bag feel really uncomfy. Can you think of anything else we could use? Leave it to me, Ben. I'll get back to you. Once the plums are ready and they've had time to cool, we can start to peel off the skins like this. And this is the really fun bit, especially when the skin peels off nice and easily like this. Hey! Now, what else could I fill Ben's sleeping bag with? When you've peeled off all the skin, it's time to take out the stones. Now, there's one stone in each plum, and this is quite a tricky job. You've got to be very careful, because we need to keep that plum shape. Nice and careful. There we are. There's one. Those plums smell great! <laughs> hey Ben, I've decided to pad out the lining of your sleeping bag with some of my socks. Um, are they clean? Well, some are, but I didn't have enough clean ones, so some of them are a bit cheesy. <laughs> well, I'm not having your cheesy socks anywhere near my sleeping bag, thank you very much. Oh, listen to you, Mr Fussy Pot. I was <laughs> only trying to help. Well, thanks for helping, but I think we need to get on with the recipe. Right, I've taken all the stones out of the plums now. One, two, three. So I'm going to spoon the creme fraiche into a bowl and then make a little nest shape like this. Be careful, Ben! <laughs> oh, no! Don't worry, Ben. I'll just lick it up. Mmm. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Sorry, small. <laughs> right. Now it's time to grate the chocolate onto a plate. This is a job for your grown up helper to do. Grate some this way, Ben. <laughs> oh, small. <laughs> this is for the recipe, not for you. <laughs> okay. We've grated a bit of that there. So now we can sprinkle the chocolate onto our creme fresh nest. Like this. Oh yes, there we go. It looks just like a nest now. So finally, we can pop on the plum eggs in the middle. Like this. And there it is. That looks delicious. Quick, Ben. Let's get it to Goldie the Goose straight away. Right you are, little cook. Golden plum eggs coming through. There. All done. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away. Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam My name's Ben And my name's Small We've got the cleanest kitchen of all Tidy all the bits and bobs The things that help us do our job Ingredients well put away Ready for use another day Pots and pans will start to smell If we don't wash them really well And now it's clear, let's all smile We'll be finished in a little while All around, up and down We've got the cleanest cafe in town Aha, here comes the plate. Ho oh, ho, yes! And it looks like Goldie the Goose enjoyed her golden plum eggs. Look, Small, she's left a note. Well, what does it say? What does it say? Ho oh, ho! Let's see, shall we? It says, 
Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, thank you for my licky lumptious golden plum eggs. You are fantastic cooks. Way! I am sorry that Ben's sleeping bag has lost some of its stuffing. Here's some golden goose down to use as new stuffing. It will make it cosy again. Oh yes, and thank you Small for rescuing my runaway egg. It hatched last week and I named the baby gosling Small after you. Happy honks from Goldie the Goose. Wow! And she named her baby gosling after me, Ben. Isn't that sweet? Oh, oh, very sweet, Small. And what about my golden goose down? Whoa! This looks really nice and warm. Hey, Ben, does that mean we can go camping now? It certainly does. Hey! <laughs> See, you, See soon. you soon! Bye! Oh, oh. Big cook, little cook, welcome to our cafe. Welcome to our cafe, the best cafe in the world! Woo! I've got the wiggles today. Do you ever get the wiggles? It starts in my fingertips and then it works all over my body. Way! Ho ho! Hey, Small! I've got the wiggles. Would you like to join me in a wiggle around the cafe? <laughs> Hello, everyone! That's a great idea, Ben. I'm great at wiggling. Okay, then, Small, we'll start by having a big wiggle right here. You join in too. Come on then. One, two, three, let's wiggle away. Oh, I'm a wiggling and nothing's gonna stop me. It feels so good. Woohoo! Small, why aren't you wiggling? I can't. What do you mean you can't? Everyone can wiggle. You're just not trying hard enough. Come on, start by putting your arms out like this. Okay. And then give your fingertips a big old wiggle. Woohoo! I can't. I just can't. I've lost my wiggle. Oh, well, maybe you're poorly. Have you got a headache or a tummy ache? Anything like that? I feel fine, Ben. I've just lost my wiggle. Don't worry, Small. We'll get your wiggle back. But it sounds like we've got a customer. Better go and see who it is. I'm on my way. Woohoo! Woo! Who's in our cafe today, Small? She's a lady that loves animals. Oh, loves animals, you say. Give us another clue. She makes animals better when they're poorly. Oh, I know. It's Vera the Vet. Yes, Ben, Vera the Vet. Now, what would a hungry vet like to eat? I think it's time to look in my book. <laughs> We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. One day I was strolling in the park when I met a very friendly dog. He dropped his ball at my feet. Hello, my name's Dog. He said, Can you see anything unusual about me? I don't think so, I replied. Well, the truth is, I've lost my wag, said Dog. Look how droopy my tail is. It just won't wag, no matter what I do. I looked at his tail, and it did look very droopy. Come on, I said. I'll take you to visit my friend the vet. When we arrived at the vet's surgery, the waiting room was very crowded. We met a sick parrot that kept squawking, Poor Polly! Poor Polly! A cat with a bandaged paw. Meow! And a skinny snake that said I looked scrumptious. At last it was Dog's turn to see the vet. We went into a special room. Hello, my name's Vera, said the vet. I hear you've lost your wag. Now, Let's see, said Vera kindly. She took a close look at Dog's tail. It's as floppy as a piece of old lettuce, said Vera. 
I have just the thing to fix it. She went to her cupboard and brought out a little box. On the front of the box it said, Wag Biscuits. <laughs> Take four of these Wag Biscuits a day, said Vera. We thanked her and left. When we were back in the park, Dog tried one of his Wag Biscuits. It tasted delicious. Then suddenly, Dog spotted a doggy friend. Woof woof, that's Boomer, he barked. And guess what? His tail began to wag. Those wag biscuits really work, yapped Dog. Thank you for taking me to see Vera the vet, Small. Little Cook to the rescue once again. That was a great adventure. Oh, well done, Small. You took Dog to see Vera the vet and she managed to get her wag back. Oh. Way! What a hero, Little Cook. Now, what can we cook for a hungry vet, I wonder? That's a good question, Ben. Ooh. Oh, I know. Big Cook's Big Cookery Book. Of course, the Big Cookery Book. There's recipes for everything in there. And where do we look for things to cook? In the book. In the book. In Big Cook's Book. Oh, let's see. Aha! I found the perfect recipe for Vera. A pitta bread dog. It looks a bit like the dog in your story, Small. Oh, brilliant. OK, then, little cook, you read out the ingredients and I'll see if we've got them. I think I might wiggle as well. Woohoo! OK, let's see. We're going to need a green pepper. Green pepper. Over we go. Here we are. Green pepper. Yep. Got it, Small. A red pepper. Ooh, a red pepper as well. Let's get that. Got the red pepper. Onion. Onion. Here we go. Got the onions. Yep. Fresh mint. Ooh, a fresh mint. Ooh, hoo, hoo. here we go. In the fridge. Fresh mint. Ooh, it smells delicious. Woo! Ben, can you stop wiggling, please? It just reminds me that I've lost my wiggle. Ooh, sorry, Small. I forgot. OK, lamb steak. Lamb steak. Here we are. Got the lamb steak. Yep. Natural yoghurt. In the fridge as well. Natural yoghurt. Got it. Pitta pouches. Oh, pitta pouches. <laughs> Sounds a bit like a tongue twister, that, doesn't it? Pitta pouches, pitta pouches, pitta pouches. <laughs> Here we go, got those small. Oil. Oil in the cupboard as well, got the oil. And black olives for decoration. Ooh. Here we go, black olives. There we are, brilliant. Everything we need for the recipe. Small, I was just wondering, where do olives come from? I don't know. Well, why don't you whiz off and find out, and I'll get everything ready. That's a great idea. See you later. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Hey, why don't you come along too? <laughs> go, Small, go, Small, whiz away. I wonder what he'll see today. I'm in the right place here. Olives grow on trees in hot countries. This man is going to marinate some olives. First he adds some chopped up herbs. Now some chopped up garlic. And finally, he pours on some oil. Time for the fun bit. He mixes it all up. Mix, mix, mix. Woohoo! The olives have been marinated. Olives can be stuffed like these or marinated with oils and herbs. These boys and their mum are going to buy some olives. Which ones will they buy? Yes. Some black ones. And some green ones too. They look really tasty. 
That was fun. See you later. I thought I'd do a few wiggles just before Small gets back. Ooh. Hey, I'm back. I found out that olives grow on trees in hot countries, and you can get green ones and black ones. Oh, I didn't know olives grew on trees. Let's get started on the pita bread dog. I'm sure Vera's tummy will be rumbling. <laughs> We're all ready, so take a look, and we will show you how to cook. Jelly boats and pirates gold, princess pea pies, carrot cakes and fruity smiles, and envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. He is big cook and he is small. Friends in our cafe, we cook for them all. When your tummy gets all rumbly, you're ready for a treat. You can make something delicious to eat. Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All, All clean, clean and, and ready, ready to, to cook. cook. Do you remember the ingredients to pita bread dog? You do. There was a green pepper, half chopped. A red pepper, half chopped, half in circles. An onion, one chopped. Fresh mint, five leaves chopped. Lamb steak, one cubed. Natural yogurt, two tablespoons. Pita pouches, two. Oil, one tablespoon. And black olives, six. Whoopee! Let's get started. I've put the yogurt into a bowl, and I'm going to add the mint. And give it a good old stir. Woo! -hoo! Yeah! Wee! Be careful, Ben. Oh! <laughs> I've been splatted, and we've only just started. Whoopee! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Sorry, Small. <laughs> I'd better go and get myself cleaned up. <laughs> I think I'll just have a quick wiggle while I've got the chance. <laughs> Oh, that's better. Right, now, put the yogurty mixture in the fridge so it stays nice and cool. There we go. I've put some oil in a pan, and I'm going to add the lamb, and fry it until it's cooked right through. Now, if you don't like lamb, you could always use vegetables. And remember, this is a job for your grown-up helper to do, because it's a hob job, and the hob is hot, hot, hot. I think I'll just have a quick wiggle. Ben? Ben? Oh, sorry, Small. I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> Go ahead, Ben. Don't let me spoil your fun. <laughs> no, it's fine. I've wiggled enough now. Right, the lamb's cooked, so I'm going to add the green pepper, the chopped slices of red pepper, and the onions. And I'm going to cook them until they're nice and soft. This is cooked now, so I'm going to turn off the heat and pop it over there. And now, Small, I'm going to try and trick your wiggle into coming back. Oh, how are you going to do that? Right, well, I'm going to do some moves and you copy me, OK? OK. Right, you can all join in too. OK, here we go. Jump up high. Wink one eye. Stamp your feet. Do a froggy leap. Show me all your teeth. Now wiggle! Woo! Oh, I can't, Ben. But thanks for trying to help me, though. How's the recipe going along? Great, Small. Ask your grown-up helper to put the two pita bread pouches in the toaster and lightly toast them. I like it when the toaster pops up. Do you, Ben? Oh, yes, Small. Hey, I've just thought of another tongue twister. Pita pouches popping up. <laughs> See if you can say it really fast. 
Pitter pouch is popping up. 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 Oh, whoopee! They're ready. When they've cooled a little, cut a hole in the bottom of one of the pitter breads, like this, using a blunt table knife. There we are. To make a little pouch, like that. Isn't that clever? <laughs> Okay, and I've already cut the top and bottom off the other pit of bread, like this. These bits are going to be the dog's ears. So now we're just about ready to spoon in some of the yummy, scrummy, lammy mixture. Ho oh, ho! In it goes. Open up the pouch and pop it inside. There we go. Mmm, it smells delicious. Now sprinkle in the olives. Here we are. In they go. All except for one. And now it's time to pop in some of the yummy yogurty mixture. There we are. Oh, this looks very tasty. In it goes. And now we can decorate it. Now I need to pop it onto a plate for this bit. So I'm going to pop it on there like that. And then I'm going to put on the dog's ears like that. Hey! <laughs> and now with the other olive, I've cut it in half and I can put on one, two eyes. And then a piece of red pepper like this one is perfect for the nose and finally for the finishing touch I'm gonna to pop in our dog's tongue and there it is a bit of bread dog scrummy quick Ben let's give it to Vera straight away okay then one pita bread dog coming through there all done. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away. Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean. Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam. My name's Ben. And my name's Small. We've got the cleanest kitchen of all. Tidy all the bits and bobs, the things that help us do our job. Ingredients well put away, ready for use another day. Pots and pans will start to smell if we don't wash them really well. And now it's clear, let's all smile, we'll be finished in a little while. All around, up and down, we've got the cleanest cafe in town. Aha! Here comes the plate! Oh, yes, Small! It looks like Vera the Vet enjoyed her pita bread dog. Look, she's left a note. Oh, what does it say? What does it say? <laughs> Let's see, shall we? It says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, Thank you for the scrumptious pita bread dog. I hear that Small has lost his wiggle. It reminded me of the dog who lost his wag. I think I can help. Try these wiggle biscuits. These ones are just for humans. From Vera the Vet. Whoa! There you go, Small. Thanks, Ben. Mmm! Delicious! Ooh! Look at me! I've got my wiggle back, Ben! <laughs> I'm going to keep on wiggling until I see you again. Ho oh, ho! Now we can wiggle together! Way! See you soon! See you soon! Woohoo!